Red Hook has an extraordinary maritime story which has been largely forgotten or lost or certainly not celebrated um, in our institutions of culture um, in this city. Red Hook had been a peninsula, a marshy place. The creation of Atlantic Dock turned Red Hook into a maritime center which became nationally important and in some ways internationally important and that history was largely forgotten. So we're not just about Red Hook at Portside. We love Red Hook, we have a hyper-local relationship to it, but Red Hook's story is New York City's maritime story in microcosm. We're sitting in a wheelhouse. Uh, I've got my hand on a wheel that was held for 20 years by my father-in-law. He was the captain from the day she was rechristened Mary Whalen. In many ways, she's a symbol for the waterways and Portside's mission is the waterways. All of Portside's programs, they're diverse as to type, but they're all related, connected, by this theme of water, waterfront, and maritime. Some of those are preservation, like preserving the ship. Some of them are job training programs. The ship is a training site for District Council Online, the painters, the Union for the Painters and Allied Trades. We have uh, summer vocational or CTE internships with high school students from WSAD, Williamsburg High School of Architecture and Design. School trips come here. We've used the boat for educational programs from grades uh, first through college professors. We all love the Mary Whalen, and I have to say I've been really impressed and surprised, honestly, um, the reception that she had because she was not envisioned from the outset as being the central focus. When this ship was uh, launched in 1938 originally, this was a class of ship and a, a class of a way to control a ship, and they were called bell boats, and there were many of them at the time. We are the last in the United States. This is all original from 1938. Speaking tube is here. That was basically to get the engineer's attention, make sure he was hearing that you needed to send him a message. The message was communicated by those pulls down there bell and jingle. There is a code, how many bells, how many jingles, that indicates to the engineer whether you wanted to go forward, astern, and the speed. All right, so this here is the telegraph, which you may recognize for some old, old movies. Um, in a bell boat, the instructions about how to control the telegraph are communicated by bells. And so you can read actually one, two, three, four. So this is the speed, the velocity controlled by the engineer. And this here is the direction of the engine. So a stern means back. There you go, back. Stern. And then ahead. Now this is a direct reversing engine, which also means you have to, if you're changing directions, you have to completely stop the engine. That becomes significant if you're operating in tight quarters, for example, the Gowanus Canal. Um, the Mary Whalen delivered fuel to Bayside Fuel to both terminals in the Gowanus Canal and up in Newtown Creek. And in those tight places, you, know, you have to go forward, back, turning around. Imagine what it is when you park a car. The car responds instantly, you stop, you start, you, put, you shift gears. Here, communicating to the engineer via bells and jingles requires being thinking ahead like five moves and that's what the captain had to do to park this boat. One of the things that's very special to me about the Portside Project is the kind of people that it's attracted um, and what it's meant to them and it's very diverse. People come and they learn something new, they recenter themselves, they find something um, and I think that's the, the power of the project. It's also the power of the waterfront. There's something special and contemplative um, that happens around the water, and sailors know that, and they work very hard, but that's also part of the experience, and so we're part of a lot of that here. This ship sits on the water. She lived on the water. She worked on the water. And uh, our efforts are to restore the waterways in New York, after all, it's the reason for the city being here, is our water. Not our waterfront, but our waterways. Symbolically, the ship as an office for Portside, New York, is an advocate as we are advocates 
for that work. Put a chick make an appearance. Good, good. Oh, good, she's in position. Check for us to really deliver the goods that we're after, we want to have a boat building shop for youth and adults. We want to have classroom space to be teaching people boating safety sorts of things. And so that we can have year-round space for conferences and exhibits and talks, which the Mary, as wonderful as she is, doesn't really hold. So we're in negotiations right now um, to get space adjoining the ship in the warehouse, which would be transformative, a real game changer. You're welcome to come aboard the Mary Whalen for Tanker Time. Tanker Time is every weekday, Monday to Friday, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then the second Sundays of the month, it's at night, so it's 5 p.m. to midnight. During tanker time, the main deck is open and it's set with furniture and you can come have a meeting, um, your lunch, a book, uh, whatever. The interior is only open for scheduled tanker tours because we have our offices here, we're doing restoration work, so we have to limit the interior access. We so look forward to having office space off the boat and then we'll be able to open up the interior more often. The evening tanker time, there's even more furniture out on the deck and people typically bring dinner, a bottle of wine, their main squeeze. Earlier on, it's parents with young kids and then the music starts and it gets darker and it goes on until midnight. And it's a fabulous way to end the weekend.